In this lecture, we are going to study linear defects. Linear defects are one dimensional defect. In the last lecture, we studied point defects. Point defects are zero dimensional and linear defects are one dimensional. These linear defects are also called dislocations. And the dimension of these dislocations, dimension is large in atomic scale but smaller compared to crystal size. Because of this location, structure becomes weak. Effect of this dislocations on the structure is that structure become, becomes weak along one dimension. And interatomic bonds in this case are distorted. in immediate vicinity of this location line. What is this location line? We will see that in the due course. Now depending on the coordination mismatch, there are two types of dislocations types. One is edge and another one is screw dislocation. And this is as per coordination mismatch. So let's first study the edge dislocation. Diagram of edge dislocation is shown over here. <coughs> this is a three dimension diagram. And as you can see, how this edge dislocation is formed there is a misalignment of atoms. We can say that there is a misalignment of atoms or you can say that there are vacancies along the line. As you see in this diagram, there are vacancies along this line. So, you can say that a dislocation is formed by misalignment of atoms or you can say because of presence of vacancies along line. This is one way of saying it that there are vacancies along a line. In other words, you can say that this edge dislocation is formed because one of the plane, one of the atomic plane does not extend throughout the crystal and it ends abruptly in the crystal. As you can see in this diagram, this is the plane over here. This plane is not extending throughout the crystal. 
and it ends abruptly over here and that's why edge dislocation is formed so other way of saying it is one of the plane atomic plane does not extend throughout the crystal and ends abruptly and that's why this edge dislocation is formed this is a three dimensional diagram what you are seeing here you cannot draw such a diagram in exam in exam you have to draw two dimensional diagram which i have already drawn and shown here as you can see this plane db ends abruptly at point b it is not extending throughout the crystal and in this diagram this abc is slip plane abc is called slip plane and above the slip plane abc there is additional atomic plane db above slip plane there is additional atomic plane db present now the line normal to paper at point b am i i am writing on this paper let's say this is a paper where i am writing then normal to this paper at point b is called the dislocation line this dislocation line is normal to paper at point p at point b and this this location is denoted by the symbol by symbol t or or reverse t to indicate this location line now in this our diagram since this uh, missing plane is below the abc below the slip plane so it is denoted by this letter reverse t if if the slip plane below the slip plane there is a missing plane that's why it is denoted by reverse t if the upper plane is missing then it is denoted by t and this t means this there is a positive h dislocation and if the missing plane is in the upper part then it is denoted by this t and that is called negative edge dislocation suppose in this case if there is extra plane over here and the plane is missing from this region then it is denoted by letter t and that is negative edge dislocation but in the first figure as you can see that distortion is present 
at lower age of half leg distortion is present at lower age half leg and that region is called this location core which is along the dislocation line so the atoms are distorted along the dislocation line and that surrounding area is called the dislocation core now age dislocation is denoted by the berger vector not only age generally dislocations are denoted by berger vector berger vector b berger vector p and this berger vector describe gives us direction and magnitude of the slip berger vector gives direction and magnitude Berger vector gives the direction and magnitude of the slip, and it is a property of dislocation line. Now, how to find Berger vector? How to find? Berger vector. For that, we have to make a Berger circuit. And Berger circuit is made by counting the same number of atomic distance in all the four directions. For example, in this case, let's see here. If you move from here, two unit in this side. Two unit in this side, then two unit in this side, and then two unit in this direction, and the circuit closes here. Yeah. This is the Berger Berger circuit. In this region, circuit closes because this circuit. does not enclose the dislocation that's why circuit is closed but if there is dislocation within this circuit then that circuit will not close let's see that let's go four unit in this direction 2 3 and 4 from here to here we moved four interatomic distance in this direction then we will move four interatomic distance in this direction also so we reached at this point then in upper direction we will move four interatomic distance so we got this this is 1 2 3 and 4 interatomic distance this is also 1 2 3 and 4 this is 1 2 3 and 4 interatomic distance now from this point we will move four interatomic distance in this direction this is 1 this is 2 and this is 3 and this is 4 so we reach here our starting point is here our final point is here we move four interatomic distance in all the directions but berger circuit is not closed it is not enclosed because it encloses 
this edge dislocation and then the vector required to close this circuit is called the burger vector now to close this circuit we have to draw this vector from this point to this point and this is nothing but the Berger vector B. So the it is a vector required to close the Berger, Berger circuit. That vector is called the Berger vector. And you can see in this case Berger vector direction and the direction of dislocation line. Dislocation line is normal at point B. Normal to the paper at point B is the dislocation line. So its direction is normal to the paper but you can see here the direction of this Berger vector is in this direction. So Berger vector is perpendicular to the dislocation line in case of the edge dislocation that is important feature of the edge dislocation burger vector is perpendicular to dislocation line so in this case it is perpendicular but in case of the screw dislocation it is parallel in the next lecture we will study screw dislocation